All right, what's good, people? E21. Wanna have to chop it up. Partner Johnny P Beats. Um, today I'm just gonna take you through a little beat I did. Uh, these type of beats I do are called chopper sizes. It's a chop exercise just to keep the blade sharp. Um, but you know, I'm just gonna take you through some chops, take you through the drums, just solo out everything, and then play it, and then bring everything back together so you can see how I did it. Um, couple of unique things that I did with this um, especially with the bass is something the first time I did something like this with bass and then for the past couple of months I've been starting my beats differently and I'm gonna get into that so what I did was this is my sample actually I tuned it down so this is the original speed I just took that piece and just use that and then I tuned it down and then played my chops something like this something like that um, so I did that You hit, you hit the drums. Simple boom back, nothing special, real simple. So I got that. Uh, my hi hats again, real simple on the hi hats. Two different hi hats. An open hi hat in there too. And again, here now, here's my my samples. Uh, my chops. Cushions, some shakers, shaker layers, and also another shaker layer with a tambourine. You know, keep it things simple. I, I'm, you know, that's me. I'm plain and simple to try to do also elements of a little complexity. You know what I mean? Just so it's not too plain and simple. Um, now the bass. Let me see if y'all can see what I got going on. So with the bass, what I did was, I was playing the beat, and at the time I had the needle on the record. And you can hear that hum, it's giving me some feedback because I have the volume too loud. So I'm playing the beat, and I'm like, where all this bass coming from? Not knowing or realizing I had the needle on the record, and I'm getting all this feedback and this hum, but it's actually going with the beat. And I was like, damn, that shit sound good. So what I did was, hold on one second, let me adjust the camera. So what I did was, I sampled that. I don't know if you can hear it, but I'm going to play just the bass, the feedback bass sample. probably can't hear it. I don't know if the camera's picking it up. But what I did was I sampled from the beginning of my beat. But I just sampled the bass because it's not picking up all the high and all the frequency ranges. It's just picking up that low. So when I sampled it in, I took that and then I played it, that, that sample bass with the beat, but I threw the bass off. So the bass, I sampled from 1-1 one, one to 1-4 one, or 1-5 or whatever, you know, for four bars. And then I threw the bass in at 2-3 for four bars. So it starts at 2-3, then loops back around 2-2-3 two, two, to give me the full loop. But it threw it, it fit perfectly, kind of, and it, and it just made it unique. This is the first time I ever did that. Um, it was just a unique sound. It just was unique.
bass of how the bass was played. So and then uh, so, and then I have what I call is ear candy. It's just elements from the record. Not, I'm not using everything. But I am using that. I'm using that. Think using that. And then I use these notes just as double up with the sample. So I'm a solo, the, what I call ear candy, and the chop so you can hear exactly what's going on. You can hear the double up of the piano notes. Now I'm just going to play just the ear candy. Also, for the past couple of months, <clears throat> I don't start my beats no more on 1-1. One, one. I start the drop of my beat on 1-3. For some reason, it opens it up. It makes it breathe a little bit more, for me anyway. It makes, you know, when you're laying out a beat, when I started there on 1-3 for, for my 1, it just opens up the beat a little bit. It lets things fit in the pocket a little bit more. I came across that by accident. Um, and and I've been doing it ever since for the past couple of months. And I've been coming up with some very unique, uh, very unique sounding beats. I mean, it, it actually it helped me grow a little bit with my beats. Because it's a little, more, a little unorthodox. But yet, <clears throat> it still comes out, you know it comes out how you want it and how you would like it to hear so I don't start my beats on one one I start my drums just to boom cat boom cat just to get my timing down and then once I got my timing down then I go to my chops and then once I get my chops down then I go back and then I lay in more kicks more snares if I need it and then my hi-hats so what you want to hear is on the one it's actually going to be uh, the breakdown, and then the beat starts on one three. So that's, you know, that's what I call, uh, it's just a little chopper size, chop exercise that I do, that I put up on Instagram. Uh, E21 Boom Bap is my Instagram. You can also follow me on Chop It Up Records in, on Instagram too. You know, my partner's on there. We, you know, we and him both put up beat videos on that one. <clears throat> um, but yeah, you know, I just wanted to get through, come through, show y'all how how I get down with my beats and it's been a minute since I did a little breakdown for y'all and uh, you know I'm going to do some more I want you, you know to show you a couple more things that I've been doing especially with this other way that I've been laying out my beats starting my beats on 1-3 rather than 1-1 one, one. Um, and you find some very unique ways of sample placement when you do, th do it like that I do anyway me personally I'm not trying to you know say this the way beats need to be done, you know, it's just, you know, a, a way that I came across that is actually helping me make more beats faster and just, you know, a, a little little bit different. So, you know, I just wanted to share that with y'all. Um, the next beat I'll do, <clears throat> the next beat that I show to break down, I'll actually show you how I program it when I start on 1-3. So, peace.